If you're building with cold form steel, one of the most critical parts of the project and construction is the careful and appropriate use of hold downs. If you're not sure if your structure needs hold downs, please reach out to a structural engineer and ensure that they've designed your project. Especially if you're building out of purely cold form steel, your structure will likely need some sort of hold down because the bottom track of your structure is not enough to hold down the walls and keep the structure from racking or skewing due to shear forces and wind forces. Hold downs are integral because they tie the walls to the foundation or they tie a floor to the next floor, which ultimately ties into the foundation. Hold downs are typically welded or thicker gauges of metal that can be installed at the base of a wall and screwed into some of the members of the wall to really tie it down. They work very commonly in conjunction with shear walls. Shear walls, as they're named, prevent the building from shear forces pushing it over. Because if you think about it, studs are like parallelograms when they're installed and they can skew if they're not braced properly. Typically, shear walls have some shear holding force, whether it's plywood or X bracing that ties the wall and prevents it from skewing. Shear walls not only support themselves, but they actually support the entire building and are placed in strategic locations to prevent the building from skewing over. Shear walls and hold downs together brace the building from lateral loads and prevent it from racking and shear forces such as earthquake and winds that may push over the building. Hold downs are typically anchored to the slab or to the next floor of the building if they're on the second floor or above. This is done through threaded rods or other mechanical anchors. When it comes to installing hold downs and shear walls, we recommend consulting with engineers or having formal engineering plans drawn up for your building. When it comes to structural sheathing on a shear wall, refer to your engineer for the layout of nails or screws to ensure connection between the structural sheathing and the wall. If your shear wall has X bracing, you'll typically see straps of flat metal that are run across diagonally and cross over each other. This creates a lot of shear strength because you can't skew that wall with the diagonal bracing. If you're installing the hold down, we recommend by starting with laying out where the hold down needs to go. Once you've laid it out, you should mark inside the wall where you need to put the threaded rod that will hold down the anchor. Then you take the anchor out and you start drilling a hole as deep as recommended by the engineer for the amount of hold down required. Once you have a hole large enough for your threaded rod, we typically recommend a structural epoxy that will harden very quickly. You put that inside of the hole and then you can put the threaded rod inside of the hole so that it gets essentially cemented into the concrete. If you're doing hold downs from floor to floor, you'll just have a long threaded rod that connects a hold down at the top of the wall and a hold down at the bottom of the next floor. Once you have a threaded rod inserted, then you simply put back your hold down and anchor it with a nut and washers to the threaded rod. And then you can screw your hold down into the wall using the specified number of screws and the right size of screw from your engineer. If you're drilling holes in a slab, it's very important to make sure that the hole gets cleaned out before you put the epoxy. Take a brush or an air gun and get all of the dust outside of the hole so that you don't have any fall in the hole whenever you put the epoxy in. We recommend Simpson products like Set3G for anchoring down threaded rods into slabs. If you have any questions about shear walls or hold downs, please reach out to our team or visit our websites for more information and purchasing them online.